Tropica Aqua Cube needs to be scaped, of course. Let me know what I should do in there. It's only eight liters or two gallons. And what I really like about the layout is this piece of wood here that comes out deliberately to the left imitates this piece of artwork. I'm gonna invent a new style of aquascaping called the refined jungle. Hi everyone, George here. And I've decided to rescape the scape line 60. As you can see, one of the side effects about having a personality type like mine is that you do very impulsive things sometimes. Sometimes that's good, sometimes not so good, but we can create something even more beautiful than the last aquascape. I have some amazing wood here, which we'll talk about later. Got some plants down here, which we'll talk about later. Some established soil. Take you step by step what we do to create this new scape. Okay, so we've emptied the vast majority of water out. You can see there are some shrimp just hanging around in the shallows here. They're going to be fine, super hardy, these shrimp. So, you know, ideally you might want to net them out, put them in a temporary home if you're going to make this a long procedure, but I'm going to be done in an hour or so. So these are going to be absolutely fine. So next step is the hardscape. This is the wood here, and it's only going to go in one or two ways because it's so big. So we'll have a play around with that. I'll talk about the wood in more detail because there's quite a lot of storytelling to do around that wood. Okay, there's the wood. <laughs> Looks really good, doesn't it? Uh, this wood is actually from Horizon Aquatics. This wood, called commonly known as Millennium Wood, and quite controversial, it has been known, there has been anecdotal reports of it killing livestock upon uh, just after installation. So I've experienced this secondhand via my good friend Adam Paschkeller uh, in Poland. We set up escape with this. Uh, brand of wood and uh, it wiped out or something wiped out all of the livestock um you know causation doesn't mean no what was it uh correlation doesn't mean causation so just because something died just after you put the wood in doesn't necessarily mean it was the wood um, but the, there are numerous reports of similar things happening. So the evidence is kind of building up um, that this wood does tend to leach some kind of toxin or it has something in it which can potentially cause issues. And I'm just going to say that it potentially may cause issues because, you know, this is, um, you know, potentially... Uh, a big issue for the suppliers of the wood. So with that in mind, what I have done is soaked this for three months. It's been in my garden in a big bucket of water and I have changed that water 100%, just poured it all away and changed it 100%, probably 10 to 15 times over the last three months. Each time it's gradually got less and less brown. The first few times it was almost black, the water. It was absolutely disgusting and it absolutely stank. Shout out to Horizon for supplying the wood. I do believe, I'm not sure if they're even stocking it anymore uh, because, of, because of the issues that I had. Um, if you do want to get this wood, you know, do your research. But I would definitely recommend waiting at least three months with regular big water changes in a bucket of water and then even testing it after that with some, maybe some really hardy cherry shrimp or something before you might want to install it with any anything more precious, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, the wood is an interesting one, but, you know, despite all of the kind of risk to health, etc., it looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? It's not often you can just get one piece of wood and it can absolutely have everything you need. Some of you may remember one of the videos I've recorded about this tank. It is going to be a high turnover tank so I can create lots of aquascapes and lots of content around it and I'm not going to be stocking any fish, just cherry shrimp. I do have a load of different plants in here. I can't remember all of the species. Some of them taken out from old scapes. I'm not actually using any brand new plants here at all so uh, shout out to Aquarium Gardens and Tropica Aquarium Plants in particular. Time to plant already. I mean, it, look, it looks disgusting. We've got watermarks everywhere. We've got loads of rubbish in here. But we'll plant. And by the action of planting into this wet soil, that's going to create more dust, more mud. Um, once we've planted, though, we'll fill up completely. It's going to look really cloudy. We'll do a 100% or a near 100% water change and it's going to look sparkly clean. And the whole process, this whole rescape process, is only taking a couple of hours. But next step is to plant. I'll take you through each species, we'll plant it, 
and then we'll go from there. These were kindly donated by Crown Gardens, a load of Rotala stems, Hydrocotyl vertical lata. Um, might not use all of it, but we'll see. Hygrophilancia araguaya, Hydrocotyl tripartita mini. So these are going to be foreground. I'm actually thinking of using the tripartita mini as a carpet with accents of the hygrophila for red needle-like accents. Blixa japonica for kind of background, mid-ground. Trident fern attached to the wood and rocks and the same with the bulbitis. And then we also have some Lobelia mini. So interesting combination of plants, not entirely sure of any overall balance and composition yet. I'm very much a scape on the fly kind of guy. So I have a rough idea of foreground, mid-ground, background and epiphytes and go from there. So I do a time lapse of the planting process and then they're excited to fill it up and see what it looks like. What happens when you scape? You make a lot of mess and you know to make an omelette you need, you need to break eggs as they say. Focal point plants, we've of course got trident fern there, no surprises, one of my favourite plants of all time. And then we have bulbitis, hudalotii up here. Excuse the background noise, we've got particularly noisy birds in the garden uh, today, which is a beautiful uh, ambiance, um, but it might, you might find it irritating. If you do, I apologise. Trident fern, bulbitis, a little bit of bulbitis here. In the background, you can see there, we have Rotala rotundifolia. To the left and the right of that in the background, let's go over to the top, shall we? You can see the spiky, the plants to the right there and over to the left, that's Blixia japonica. And that runs towards the mid ground as well on the right. And then in front of that, we have Lobelia cardinalis mini. So this is a miniature, this is a dwarf variety of the regular cardinalis and it grows quite compact so I'm quite interested to see how this does in the longer term. And in front of that from above you can see the reddish plant there that's the Hygrophila lancea araguay that is going to grow really nice and compact and maintain its red coloration hopefully underneath the high lighting. We'll talk about the lighting and the technology behind this aquascape in a bit more detail later. Moving all the way to the foreground now we have the new um, hydrocotyle Tripartita mini, and this is actually a Danale plant, uh, so interesting to see that one. You can see the shrimp in there, they're doing just fine. As I say, no fish in this aquascape, this is just going to be used to turn over frequent aquascapes. Next steps is to fill up with water, fit our filtration, fit the CO2, get everything running, give it a summary at the end and then have a little chat. So we filled up with water now, using the red colander of course to disperse the water to prevent the soil from clouding too much. During the filling process I also siphoned at the same time to do a running water change to make the water crystal clear and to dilute all of the waste organics that would have been disturbed from the old soil. So this is the original soil from the from the first scape. It's probably two or three months old, the, the original soil. So plenty of life left in there now. Next, I will fit the filter and the CO2. So this is the CO2 art inline diffuser, kindly donated uh, by Aquarium Gardens. One I need to order some plants for my new project in two weeks time I'm off to um, Iowa to do a private aquascape for a client He's actually a dentist but it's for his home and uh, eight foot, I think it's an eight foot by two foot by two foot. But the good thing about these is that they take all the equipment out of the tank so you don't have an in-tank diffuser and arguably you get a better CO2 distribution because those CO2 micro bubbles are now part of that water movement that's running through that hose very quickly depending on the power of the filter of course so the impregnated co2 micro bubbles go flow through that hose super fast and then they get distributed hopefully very well throughout the water column in the aquarium which then feeds the plants so that co2 mist that co2 gas in those tiny bubbles literally hitting the plant tissue and feeding the plants that way, rather 
then the CO2 actually fully dissolving in the water, as you would do with like a CO2 reactor. So a CO2 reactor works differently. You actually inject the CO2 into the water, and then the CO2 gas actually dissolves fully in the water, so you don't see the bubbles. Conversely, with the CO2 inline diffuser, which works with a ceramic tube, which the high pressure gas builds up behind, pushes through, those tiny microbubbles come through the other side, those microbubbles potentially don't fully dissolve in the water, but they hit, like I said, they hit the plant tissue, and the plant can actually be almost confused into thinking it's growing out of the water, growing in the air, because it's actually being hit with the CO2 gas in its gas form, rather than the dissolved CO2. Bit of a ramble there, hopefully it'll make sense. Anyway, let's fit this now. Here we are, the scape's uh, complete, filled up with water. Uh, all the plants are secured, no floaters. And I think it's looking really good. Let me know what you think, go wide angle. Lovely addition to uh, the office space now. Now I would say what fish we put in here, but I'm not putting fish in here because this is a high turnover tank. The idea is creating new aquascapes for content over and over and over again. I think if we know we're gonna be creating new layouts over and over again, I'm not sure how ethical it is to deliberately keep different fish and get them rehomed over and over again. So I'm being a little bit hypocritical there in a way because I am working on a book project with Ty Streetman, which is all about turning over these aquascapes regularly with new fish. But the, the end result of that is a educational book, which is hopefully going to get this message of connection with nature and aquatic habitats and just some storytelling about their destruction and maybe some ways in which we can help, um, you know, help conserve them. So I'm rambling. Okay, let's have a quick chat about the equipment. It was a Biomaster 600 Thermo external canister filter filled with the regular standard media with the CO2 inline diffuser there from CO2 Art, Greenleaf Aquarium, high-end regulator running, I don't know what, three bubbles a second there, quite a lot of CO2. And then hoses obviously straight into the aquarium there over the side using the scaper line slots that are pre, pre built in for you. And lots of circulation coming out of here with a CO2 mist blasting all over the aquarium. I actually have a acrylic inlet here uh, which is different to the glass, of course. I did have a glass one, but the slots were very restricting and I, th I think it really did restrict the flow. So I've gone for the acrylic, which is of course a bit more tough, but not quite as clear and uh, as kind of transparent, a bit, a bit smoky. And this is purely transparent, of course. Tools on the cabinet door there look really cool, don't they? But yeah, I really love this system. It was a Scaper Line 60. There are other videos on this, uh, on my channel, and also check out Yuri's. He's done a great unboxing video of this, featuring all of the unique aquascaping features to do with it. Uh, Tropical Aqua Cube needs to be scaped, of course. Let me know what I should do in there. It's only eight liters or two gallons. And this is looking really good, isn't it? Really pleased with how this is coming on. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Oh, let's check out the circulator quickly, shall we? Looking good. Love these guys. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.